Zigbee is a wireless protocol that's been designed for smart home devices, and you can take advantage of it in Home Assistant if you've got the right hardware and you know how to configure it. It's more secure than using Wi-Fi based devices because these Zigbee devices don't have access to anything on your network other than Home Assistant, for instance. They can't get access to the internet, meaning they can't leak information out and nothing on the internet can actually get access to them. They're also more reliable because with a Wi-Fi network, as you add more and more devices, things just slow down. And you also have the issue of actual coverage. As devices get further and further away from your access point, they tend to struggle. Whereas with Zigbee, it forms its own wireless mesh. So how do you actually configure Home Assistant to support Zigbee? Well, if that's something you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, because that's what we'll be going over. Now, whether you're running Home Assistant on a physical computer or on a virtual machine, in order to get access to Zigbee devices, you're going to need something similar to this. So this is a Combi 2 USB dongle. It's extremely popular, works really, really well with Home Assistant, but there are other manufacturers out there if you particularly want to use them. One thing I'm going to point out about Zigbee, though, is that it uses the same 2.4 gigahertz frequency that yeah, your Wi-Fi network uses. And it's on channel one, meaning you might actually get interference between Zigbee and your access point and all your Wi-Fi devices. So if your Wi-Fi access point isn't clever enough to move your devices to a different channel, you might find it's better to actually reconfigure it and manually put your devices into a different channel. But other than that, once you plug the actual USB dongle into your computer, we can then configure Home Assistant to take advantage of it. Now, if you're using a Zigbee controller that Home Assistant recognizes, then what you're going to get is a notification prompt here, uh, which will walk us through installing the software. On the other hand, if you're not seeing a notification, what I would suggest to do is to actually reboot your computer and then give it a few minutes, see if this notification comes up. If not, then skip ahead to the actual next section, which is where we'll cover how to actually install the software manually. But in this case, I've got the notification popped up here. So I'm going to click on notifications. Then I'm going to click on the link, check it out. And it's saying that it's discovered a device. So more specifically, it's saying that, it's a, that we've got a device that's plugged into this computer that will be suitable for the Zigbee home automation integration. And it's suggesting we actually install this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the configure button. And then it's just going to walk us through the process here. So it's giving us a, a lot of details here about this particular controller, but the choices are you either just close the, the actual box if you're not interested in continuing. In our case, we do actually want to install the software because we do want to get access to Zigbee devices. So we're just going to click on submit. And it doesn't take that long, I must admit. Uh, it'll install the software, specifically this integration software for Zigbee home automation. And then once that's done, we're going to get a pop-up box. Basically, it's going to identify the actual controller because that's what it's installed, uh, as you can see here. It's, it's just basically asking us what area do we actually want to assign this to. Uh, by default, you get these three areas to begin with with Home Assistant. You can add a new one as part of this installation, if you will. But because this is a controller, it's not as if I'm going to actually send instructions or set up any rules to the actual controller itself, basically. So personally, I'm just going to leave that blank, but you can put it in a specific area. If, for instance, you keep Home Assistant in a certain room and you just want to keep track of things, entirely up to you. But either way, once you're done, just click on Finish, and that's the installation completed. Now, if you're not seeing this notification option, we can still install the software manually. But the first thing we want to do is actually just check our actual hardware just to make sure that we've got a Zigbee controller in here that we recognize and can use. So to do that, click on this configuration option here. Then we're going to go to add-ons, backups, and supervisor. Then we'll go to system. Then under this host section here, click on the ellipses then select hardware. And this is, gives us a list of hardware for the computer, but I'm just going to filter it out uh, with USB because we're looking for USB devices. Now, for me, this Zigbee controller, the Combi 2, as I said, it's a very popular controller. It's easy to identify by Home Assistant. It's well known. 
and it, it even gives you like the manufacturer name as well as the actual uh, item details itself uh, so that's the actual product id all in that one line but once you've actually identified that device assuming the computer has picked up something that you recognize as your zigbee controller make a note of this part where it's saying slash dev slash serial because we'll need to refer to this when we actually install the software but i'm going to click on the close button here then we're going to go over to configuration and then to devices and services now if you haven't got the notification chances are you don't have this option here which is actually telling you that there's basically some hardware has been identified and a possible integration discovered that you can install on the other hand if you are seeing this you can just follow through what i did in the previous section where you just click on the configure uh, option there and just follow that through but assuming you don't have this either the next step is to click on add integration to make life easier we're just going to filter this out so we're just going to type in zig for zigbee so basically this is what we want to install the zigbee home automation integration so we're going to click on that now again it actually identifies my particular radio controller here so i can just click that damn option there and just carry on and use that for my zigbee controller otherwise i've got another choice here which is no set up another instance so i can click on that and i can actually select that actual device from the list because i know what it is so it's a case of you either have something in there that you know is a zigbee radio controller that you can use in which case you would select it from the list or better still you could have selected in the previous step but however you do this you end up with a choice basically which is to submit and then what it does it goes off and then starts the installation process so it's installing the actual zigbee software the integration software which allows Home Assistant to get access to this radio controller, which then will allow it to actually get access to Zigbee devices. So it doesn't take too long, as you can see here. It says it's finished. It doesn't matter which path you take here. You'll always end up back uh, at this page at the end, where it's basically told us it's installed the software. This is the actual Zigbee coordinator it's referring to, or a Zigbee controller. And it's basically just wanting to know what area you want to put this in. Now, if you click on the drop down menu, you can see this is just a basic installation of Home Assistant. So these are the three rooms you get by default. So you can either pick one of these rooms or you can add a completely new room here while you're, while you're at the, where going through this install process. In my case, because this is an actual controller, I'm not really going to be sending any rules to it. So I'm just going to leave that blank, but it's entirely up to you what you do with that field. Either way, next thing to do is just click on the finish button and that installs the integration. Now it's actually finished essentially that's still got that discovery there but as far as we're concerned we've now got the software actually installed which means we can actually now actually take advantage of that radio controller and start getting access to zigbee devices now rather than just jumping straight in and installing new zigbee devices into home assistant it helps to plan things out first and that's because zigbee can set up a mesh network and if you plan it out first you'll get much better coverage and your zigbee network will be a lot more reliable so there are some devices out there, specifically mains powered ones, that can act as a relay. In other words, if you've got, say, like a battery operated Zigbee device that's quite a distance away from Home Assistant, it would be able to send information to the relay and the relay would be able to pass it over to Home Assistant and vice versa. So it helps to actually have a think about the order in which you install your devices first. Set up those ones that are going to act as your relays and start with the ones closest to Home Assistant and work your way outwards. And once you've actually got those all set up, that gives you your foundation. And then you can start adding in the battery operated ones. Now, if you want to add a Zigbee device into Home Assistant, we have to put both of them into pairing mode. So we'll start with Home Assistant first. So we're going to click on configuration. Then we're going to go to devices and services. And then here where we've got our Zigbee home automation integration, we're going to click configure. And then we're going to click add device. And that puts Home Assistant into, into pairing mode where it starts searching for Zigbee devices that are out there. Now, as it says, you're going to have to do something similar to the actual device that you want to add into Home Assistant. And it's best to check instructions because it's going to vary depending on the device. For sort of like smart home devices that are mains powered, so I'm talking about things like light bulbs, power sockets, and so on. Typically, you've just got to plug those in, turn them on, and that's it. They'll automatically kick in and start pairing up. Uh, if you've got battery-operated devices, then usually they've got a button. You might have to press it a certain number of times, or you've got to hold it down for a certain period of time. 
So I've got a device here, and this, this is a battery operated one. I just need to hold this down for a few seconds. That puts that one into pairing mode. So Home Assistant's now detected it. Now, the device name, not surprisingly, is not particularly helpful. So I'm just going to rename this one. And we're going to call it the Kitchen Window Sensor. Because this one's just a, it's a window door sensor. Not surprisingly, I want to put it in the kitchen. So for the area, I'm going to select kitchen. And then just to finish it up, I'm just going to click anywhere else in this empty space. Now you can carry on searching for other devices if you want, but when I've done, I just want to add that one. So I'm going to click the configuration option again. I'm going to go to devices and services. And you can see we're now showing two devices for Zigbee Home Automation. So if I click on that, we've now got our kitchen window sensor. So if I click that, we've got our device, which is a kitchen window sensor, and that's got a sensor, which has got some obscure name in there. So I'm going to click on the sensor because I want to rename this to something which is a lot easier for me to actually identify. So just call it the kitchen window sensor. You can do things like changing the icons, but what I'm going to do is I want to change this entity ID more than anything because this is something that's going to get used in future rules. Again, the the name that, that we've got here, it's a bit it's a bit long to be honest, it's a bit overly complicated. It doesn't even tell me really much about where it is or what it's for. So I'm going to delete that. So all that we're left with is just the actual type of sensor it is, which is a binary sensor, and then the dot or period, if you will. And then after that, we'll put our own name in. So I'm going to call this uh, kitchen window sensor. Now you can change it, you know, to something else if you want. I mean, for instance, I can make this a bit more easy to read by putting in some underscores between there just to space the words out. But whatever it is you want to use, that's entirely up to you. Just make sure you leave that part there alone, the binary sensor then the, and the dot. It's what follows that period is what's important. That's what you want to, to use yourself, what you really want to be referencing in your rules. So now I've renamed it for myself, as well as for the actual rules that we'll be setting up. And I'll click on update, and then that updates our sensor. And the good thing is, if we go over to the overview section here, we've now got a, a little window sensor here. And what this is, it's just a, a window door sensor, easy enough to, to use. I mean, it's just a pair of magnets, basically. But if I bring those closer together, you can see it's saying it's closed. Now it's open, then it's closed. So it's, it's very, very quick uh, to detect things. And all of this is taking place within the actual home. Uh, so it's it's not as if it's going off to the internet or something to some cloud server to, to update. It's all taking place within the, uh, my own home, so it's a lot, lot faster to respond to things. But very, very easy to set up. I mean, there's nothing really else to do when it comes to something like that specific device because it's just a, an on-off device, basically. Uh, if I just go back to the devices themselves... That's basically it. I mean, there's other things you can start doing here about like trying to reconfigure it if you've got problems and so on. But these sort of things just normally wouldn't touch. It's usually just changing its name, for example, changing the ID, for instance. And that's pretty much about it. But it means once we've actually got our actual uh, device installed, we can then start to take advantage of it within uh, Home Assistant. Now, if you want to remove a Sigby device from Home Assistant, it's really easy to do. Just go to configuration, devices and services. And then where we've got our Zigbee home automation, click on your list of devices here and then select the device that you want to remove. And then down here, it stands out in red, remove device. So we just click on remove device and then we click on okay to remove it or cancel if we changed our minds. The, th the key thing is, it's not like Z-Way, for instance, where uh, we've got to get both devices to make a clean break. We just simply remove this device when it comes to Zigbee. So click on Remove Device, click OK, and that's it. The device is now removed. Well, hopefully this video has shown you just how easy it is to set up Home Assistant to support Zigbee. If the controller is actually recognized and known by Home Assistant, there's a simple wizard to follow to install the integration software. Once that's done, it's a very simple process to add and remove devices.
Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If so, then do click the like button and share as that'll help get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please post those in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yes, do subscribe. Just remember to set the bell icon to actually send you notifications when new content gets released. Although I also post to Twitter as well as Facebook. If you'd like to help the channel and support it, you can actually make contributions through PayPal and buy me a coffee. I've also got links to Patreon and there's also the join membership option for YouTube itself. Patreon and YouTube members do have the option to actually benefit from early access as well. But above all, many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.